So the mainstream media, left wing, right wing, Sunak, Starmer, they're totally going after Nigel Farage for his comments on the Ukraine war. You know, they're all calling him a, a Putin apologist. You know, he Putin wants him in power. And now, what he's actually done is he's proved the hypocrisy, not the hypocrisy, but he's proved of the, the fact that there is a uniparty. The fact that on both sides, when it comes down to these important topics like the Russia-Ukraine war, they actually believe in most of the same things with the COVID vaccine. They actually agree on most things. So there is a real uniparty. The, you know, the Guardian and the the Telegraph, the Sun, will actually agree with the same, with the exact same beliefs when it comes to, you know, vaccines and wars and all this stuff. So they're actually not that much different. Now, what he's done, however... It is not a popular opinion. He probably shouldn't have said it if he's going for the whole popularity contest. It's not a good look. He's it's looking bad for the polls. Ever since he said it, it's going down. But you know what? Sometimes you just got to tell the truth. I'm sure he's woken up a few people. You have to be anti-war. You have to be like, okay, this war isn't good. He, all he's done, he's been called all these terrible things after simply thinking outside of the box, outside of the parameters it's, that society has created for, you know, irrational, non-critical thinking. That's all he's done. And look at the backlash he's getting now. Put an apologist. You don't have to be a put an apologist. He said, even in an interview or a live debate, 10 years ago, 2014, he said, I don't like Putin. He's, he's, he's clearly, he's very consistent. He says, I do not like Putin. I don't like Putin. But we also provoked him. If you, po if you poke the Russian bear... Don't be surprised when he attacks back. That's all he said. You know, you can argue Putin's a bad man, he's a dictator, all this stuff. But you shouldn't... If that's the case, if he is the greatest... If he is a great warlord, and if he does have all these nuclear weapons, and if he is an evil dictator, well, perhaps that's not really the kind of person you want to provoke. You know, think of it the other way. Imagine Ireland, right? We're in Britain. Imagine Ireland randomly allied with China. They're on our border right there. China's going to go and station nuclear weapons in Ireland. Ireland are now our enemy. Why should they just allow... Why should we just allow that to have... Well, Ireland's a sovereign nation, right? Well, yeah, of course they are. But it doesn't mean that our enemies can just station nuclear weapons right on our border. Because they're a sovereign nation. So actually, Ukraine doesn't have the right to just do whatever they want to do. Do they want to? Maybe. Does it, does it work like that in geopolitics? No, it doesn't. When it comes to allies and enemies, you don't just let the biggest country on your border ally and station the nuclear weapons and station troops and military bases of not just your enemy, not just someone that's a different country, but someone who's NATO, founded on the basis that we are organizing together as a military alliance to fight Russia. The founding principle of NATO is we are anti-Russia. That, that's literally it. So of course you're going to feel threatened. You should not provoke them. That's just how it works. It does not make you a Putin apologist to accept that two things are true. Putin is a dictator. We provoke them. You know, Ukraine have the right to defend themselves. Sure, everyone has the right to defend themselves, even if you provoke them or not. You don't provoke someone, have them fight back and sit and surrender. But it doesn't mean we should be funding their war. It means he should also probably take a bit of responsibility. And go, okay, yeah, we, we did that. Fine, whatever. You know, at least tell people the truth. Of course not going to do that because they're all in, in the war, the money laundering, proxy war, all of this stuff. So, I don't see Nigel Farage as a Putin apologist. He's just ex he's just looking at the facts and maybe facts are unpopular. We know they are. Everyone thinks men can be women and everything's backwards now. So sure, in this time where people are stupider than ever, people don't like Nigel Farage for his stance on the Ukraine war. You don't have to be pro-Ukraine. You, you don't even have to be anti-Ukraine. You can simply look... That's, this is true and this is also true. Two truths are, all, are often not totally opposed to each other. They're saying, oh, he's a fake patriot. Nigel Farage is a fake patriot because he said that we are partially responsible for the war and that we are the bad guys. That doesn't make him not a patriot. A patriot, a nationalist, believes that you do what is best for your country. So no, a patriot is not you blindly support any sort of militaristic action that your country takes. It does not mean that, you know, I mean, perhaps we're attaching it to colonialism, that you just believe that you can walk into any country you want, and that's what a patriot is. That's not what a patriot is. It means you do what's best for you and your people. It means that you do what is in your country's interests. So no, saying that we were wrong, when he says we, he's not talking about the British people, he's talking about the 
top 1%, the political elite class, criticizing them. Because remember, government and people aren't related. They don't really represent us. So to criticize the actions of our governments 10 years ago, five years ago, is not 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 being a British patriot to sit here and go, our country, because when you're saying our country, you mean our leaders dragged us into this. You're not saying, oh, the British people did this. You're not doing that. You're saying our leaders who acted outside the interests of our own people and provoked a war. Not supporting your side in the war doesn't mean you're not a patriot. Actually, it's nothing about supporting or not supporting your own country. It's actually to do with just, let's stay out of war because it doesn't benefit us. That's real patriotism. In fact, Nigel Farage is more of a patriot than anyone else because he acknowledges that. Misguided patriotism is going, I love my country, so I support anything my government does. That's not how it works. That's not what you do. Because sometimes the government doesn't act within your country's interests. And not sometimes for us, actually always for us. We get the worst governments there are in the West. So no, he is not a Putin apologist. He's not a fascist supporter. He's not a fake patriot. He's none of these things. In fact, he's actually one of the only candidates who was probably consistently shown that he is for the people and that he is for improving the state of the country. And they'll say, well, he's a showman like Hitler. Okay, look, Hitler was bad, fine. But taking away his good qualities, because, okay, look, you have to have good qualities to become in power, to get democratically elected. I'm not talking about moral or ethical or empathetic, compassionate. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about leadership qualities. Are you a good speaker? Are you persuasive? Because you can't say Hitler wasn't persuasive. Oh, Hitler's persuasive and so is Nigel Farage. So Nigel Farage is like Hitler. Well, no, he's not. And plus, that was one of his only good qualities. So taking his good qualities and saying, well, you know, Hitler was a family man. I'm also a family man. So I'm like, no, 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 you can't just take his good, his few good qualities and say, oh, well, you're also those good qualities. So that, that doesn't make you a bad person. Of course it doesn't. So he's none of these things. The media is having a meltdown over it. He's exposed the uniparty. They all, in reality, agree with absolutely everything with each other. There is no opposition. And this is why we need reform. This is why we need to for us. Because for democracy to work, you need an opposition. The left, the current left and the right, or they're actually both centre-left, maybe the Tories are centrist, moderate. We need an opposition. We don't have that right now. That's why we need to get the Tories to zero seats. Or at least try. We need Reform Party in. Not because Reform Party are right on everything, it's simply because there's an opposition. Someone in Parliament can finally disagree with each other on the major topics, like Russia-Ukraine. Like the Covid vaccines. You will not have the opposition all be clapping for the Prime Minister when he goes, the vaccine's unequivocally, unequivocally safe and effective. You will not have the entire Parliament clapping. You'll have one half clapping and the opposition going, you're wrong. Instead of everyone agreeing with each other on absolutely everything. So he's exposed to Uniparty. And he's also probably woken quite a few people up, despite maybe losing a few supporters. He's also probably woken a few up. They are now realising the Conservative Party is no longer Conservative. All of this, and they're starting, they're discovering the truth of many of these matters. And finally, Nader Farage has maybe woken up potentially a few hundred thousand more people than were have otherwise. And those people are no longer going to support unnecessary wars, are not within their interests. They're not going to send our kids to die in war. They're not going to go to war themselves. They're going to disobey if it comes to it. And that's what's good about it.